Okay. I'm going to wait for a second. This is my first time doing a live stream, if you can hear. Okay. Yeah, I've never done one of these and I really wanted to do one of them. So I put up a poll asking people to ask me questions and I got a bunch of responses. So I'm just going to answer it in this live stream. Then it'll go public for a regular video so you can rewatch this if you missed it. Um, okay, let me find them. Okay, I hope you can hear me okay. I have a microphone right here, but I'm not sure if it's working. Oh, also, cut my hair. Quarantine definitely got the better of me. I was bored and literally cut it at like 3 a.m. in the morning. I was just like looking in the mirror and I decided to chop it all off. So I did a really bad job. So let's not mind that. Um, I'm gonna have to go to the hairdresser once all of this is over. Um, I wanna collab to be Okay, so I just got a comment on one of my YouTube channels, I mean, one of my YouTube videos, and she was saying, let me find it. She was saying, could you do a video on how to keep the promises you make to yourself? It seems so easy to keep promises to others. But when I want to commit to something for myself, like losing weight and sticking to the plan, I always break that promise and never reach the goal um, I have for myself. So yeah, I've struggled with this a lot. I mean, since a very young age, I can remember, um, I'd say from the age of like, I don't know, like 13, when I started dieting, like I remember when I was 13, I would go to school, okay, and I wouldn't eat any breakfast. And then during school, I would allow myself to have like one one thing, like uh, one muffin or one cookie, like something super unhealthy. And then I'd be like, okay, that's me done for the day. Um, That's all I'm going to eat. And I'd go home and just binge my entire kitchen um, because obviously I hadn't eaten enough all day. All I'd eaten was a cookie. And I would binge every single night and I'd always want to lose weight, but I would do this method and then I would never stick to it. And then I started getting into more like the gym and eating a lot healthier. And the same thing happened. Like I've never been one to struggle with working out, but when it comes to eating well, that's like a whole different story for me. So, uh, you know, I started like constantly setting the attention to lose weight. I'd be like, okay, today I'm going to lose weight. Like it's going to happen. And then literally, you know, like a week later, I'd go back to eating really badly, like eating tons of unhealthy foods. So I completely understand where you're coming from. I think it's, it's definitely, you're definitely not alone. Um, but when setting an intention, the most effective thing I've found, um, that has helped me lose weight and that has helped me stick to plans. This isn't necessarily have to be lose weight, but just like sticking to something. Um, that's what I believe the definition of confidence is, is holding keeping promises to yourself and when I heard that definition the other week it blew my mind because for so long I thought as confident as you know walking into a room and being loud and being confident and you know just being this big persona and now I see it as completely different as just keeping like promises to yourself and holding a promise to yourself um so it's really just changing your self-image. So if you're struggling with keeping a promise to yourself of losing weight, you need to change your self-image around yourself. And I find this the easiest way to lose weight or to, you know, start a business or attract a partner, whatever intention or goal you want to do. I think the easiest way and for it to be a fun process is like through changing your self-image. Because a lot of people, what they do is they make the goals for themselves super you know, harsh. Like they're like, oh my gosh, I hate my body. I need to lose weight. Or I'm broke. I need to start a business. Or, you know, I'm so single and like, I'll, it's, I'm just hate being single. I need a boyfriend. And they go through it like from such a negative approach. And then it's such a negative experience for people. And they always end up crashing and stopping. Um, I read the book, uh, Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein, and she explains this really well. But it's basically, let me just one sec. It's better. Oh, also, I got sunburnt. I obviously missed a part of my chest yesterday. I was laying out in the sun for too long. Um, but as I was saying was, where was I about losing weight? Yeah, you need to change your self-image. So I believe very strongly in acting as if, and I just uploaded a video on this, but I'll just expand a bit more, um, is acting as if. So you need to view yourself as the person you already want to be. You know, if you're saying, oh, I want to lose weight, like I really, really want to lose weight, um, and then you're coming at it from a place of like, oh my God, I'm so unfit. Like I need to lose weight. This is awful. It's not, you're not going to stick with it because you're, you're feeling it really negative. Like it's a negative emotion. Um, and then what do you do when you feel negative? You most likely will binge or you'll do something not good for your self-esteem. So the crucial way is to 
you know, ch change your self image and view yourself as already that person. So if you're struggling with the wanting to lose weight, so like, let's say you want to get a toned body. Okay. You're going to have to already view yourself as that. And you're going to need to tell it to yourself numerous times throughout the day. And um, because at the start, you're going to be telling yourself like, oh, I have a really good body. And you're not going to believe it. You know, your subconscious mind is going to bounce back and be like, this is false. Like you're such a liar. You don't have a good body and you need to keep telling yourself that. And eventually your subconscious mind will start to believe it. Um, and then it'll embody it because your appearance, your reality, where you are in your life is a direct reflection of your limiting beliefs. And, you know, it's a direct, like it literally reflects everything. So in order to mirror you know, an, like a healthy body, unless you want to, you know, get a good body. That's I'm probably assuming why you want to lose weight or just for confidence um, is through mirroring that. So through your thoughts, telling yourself every day, you know, you do feel confident. You feel like you have a great shape body. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by these messages in the corner. Um, telling yourself you have a good body. For me personally, how I've been able to do that is through telling myself I'm an elegant, feminine, high class woman. Like that's how I have been able to eat healthy and how I've been able to, you know, work out so much and maintain a good figure um, is through embodying a high class woman. Now, for someone else, they may not want to be a high class woman. They may want to be just like a really thick person like a thick like figure well then you need to tell yourself you are that when you embody that kind of like character the you step into the person who it is you would want to become and the actions that they would do so I think it's super important to find a mentor or like a role model or someone online who has what you want and um, like let's say you want to the, have a muscly body I don't know go find like a certain youtuber that you relate to don't find a million and one find one specific youtuber because I find when you find way too many you get so confused what to follow you're like should I follow this should I follow this just find one person and start to study them start to study their craft you know Gary V always says like he studies people you know he he's not into self books and like reading he just studies people and how they got to where they are and audits how they act. So who do you want to step into and who do you want to become? I think is a great way for losing weight is to kind of play a game, like have fun with it um, and treat it like a game because that's what uh, always works. Just having fun, easing into a fun emotion because like if you're going to be going from going at it from a place of hating your body, you're going to feel like crap and then you're going to eat crap and you're not going to get the results you want. So you always need to change the belief for yourself. That's what creates the emotion. And you always do actions based on your emotion. Like any action you do in life is based on the emotion you're feeling in that certain moment. So it's building small momentum. Um, it's just every moment you can changing your thought if it's a negative one. You know, it's not thinking of the long term like, oh, my God, I need to lose this weight within a month. You need to just focus on what can you do right now? Um, instead of like getting overwhelmed by the whole month. Do you know what I mean? Um, so this is a great book if you haven't read it already, Super Attractor. If you're into spirituality, it's a great starter. Okay, hi, Ella. I have a four-hour exam tomorrow and I feel in a panic. I feel I won't be able to concentrate help. Okay, worrying about it isn't going to help. Like literally you inducing anxiety and stress and worry isn't going to help it at all. Um, easier said than done. But what I would do is I would, you know, clear your mind. So I'd go into a room right now or just breathe, clear your mind, and then visualize it going really well. Um, a great book, sorry, I have all my books here. A great book is Psycho Cybernetics um, for visualization. I mean, there are so many studies on visualization that are so powerful. They did like, they conducted a study of two women who wanted to lose weight, okay? And both the women were on the same diet. They were doing the exact same exercises, but one of them was told to visualize herself losing weight when she was exercising every day and the other person wasn't told anything about visualization and the girl who visualized lost like so much more weight than the girl who didn't visualize um there's just so many cool studies if you look into it it's insane but um visualize yourself with the exam going really really well it'll calm your body it'll calm you down it'll calm the nerves I promise you visualization is so fun like you just shut your eyes and you just imagine it going well because your body can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not reality and it creates like a really good dopamine feeling in your body and then your body acts out for that to actually happen when the moment does come uh, how to attract the perfect relationship <laughs> I mean I think this this could be like a whole movie in itself but it all comes down again to like the emotions of your how you're feeling like how are you feeling when you think of love you know are you thinking like if, if a couple walks down the street are you looking at them with disgust like I remember years ago 
I wanted to like be in a relationship so badly I was like oh my god like I really want a relationship and whenever I saw um like other couples or I saw other happy people in relationships I would just feel like I would like scowl I'd be like oh like I don't have that like this is ridiculous and I was focusing so much on the lack and you're just putting out more lack more negativity but when you like appreciate other people who are in relationships and you just appreciate it and like instead of going at it from oh I don't have that look at it as oh wow this shows that it is possible and that I can have that too and by you feeling those feelings and emotions it will come to you as well you're super aware of it um but it's feeling feeling these things as if you already had them again going back like act as if you need to embody the character of someone who is in a relationship like how would they think would they act like if someone was in a relationship they wouldn't be complaining about not having a boyfriend because they have a boyfriend so you need to embody that now and you'll start to get used to it it's kind of like all the law of attraction it's it's it really does work I mean when I changed that switch that like everything changed for me it was crazy um okay I'm gonna pull out Instagram because I got a bunch of questions Oh, also. Okay, what should I film? So someone said, I like this question. It was creating creating a lifestyle for long-lasting mental health. Um, okay, so for long-lasting mental health, I think it is super important to just not be getting overwhelmed. Like, something you've recently manifested. Okay, I'll say it in a sec. But, um... One thing that happened to me recently was, you know, I got so overwhelmed about my whole life. I was like, oh my God, I feel so, boy, you feel, <laughs> I was like, I feel so, oh my God, I can't concentrate with all these messages. Sorry. Creating a lifestyle for long lasting mental health. It's not thinking about the long term with that and not thinking like, oh, how, how do I have to act right now? It's, it, oh my God, I can't concentrate. It's basically building small momentum. So in every moment, it's just choosing how you feel in that present moment to create long-term mental health. Don't be thinking of the long-term picture. Like if you feel like crap right now, you shouldn't be panicking about, you know, feeling like this for the rest of your life. It's just, what can you do to change your emotion in that current moment? Um, again, super attractor, super attractor by Gabby Bernstein. She literally, um, I'm trying to take this person out of it. That's why. So I can focus. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, what you need to do is build small momentum. So what can you do in the present moment is to, through thinking, a positive thought. Um, let me find it actually here. Dun, dun, dun. So it's the emotional scale. Okay, so... So at the start, the highest like feeling you can feel is joy. And then it's passion. Then it's enthusiasm. Then it's belief, like a positive belief. And um, then it's hopefulness, uh, contentment, boredom. And it goes all the way down to disappointment, worry, blame, anger, and jealousy. So jealousy is one of the lowest feelings you can feel, um, being jealous. And then above that is anger. So if you, let's say, feel crap in a certain moment, let's say you're going through Instagram and you feel jealous about all these people's lives, you're like oh my God, I'm so jealous. I want their life. Being angry is actually moving a momentum up the scale. So if you can't even, if you're feeling jealous, start to turn it into anger. And I know that might seem weird, but it's actually going up a scale. And then once you've reached anger, what you can do is change your state to maybe doubt. <laughs> it's actually higher than anger. And then you build up, up, up. Um, I'm from Ireland. Yeah, I live in Canada though. Um, and then you go all the way up and that's what brings you up vibration so it's just thinking a good thought in the moment it's called the choose again method you basically let's say you're having a negative thought you know you just catch that thought you replace it with this isn't true I'm changing um oh my god that was my brother I just removed my brother from the chat I think I don't even know. Um, so that is that is it. Just building small momentum. Don't get panicked. Like, you know, when I'm in a mad state, like this quarantine I've had, I mean, I've been by myself like for a month now or something in quarantine. Like there's been days where I'm like, like my head's going out of control, like spiraling. And I'm like, oh my God, will I feel like this for the rest of my life? Like, am I always going to feel like this? And 
shout out to my brother Reese. Um, but you need to just catch that in the moment and change your state now because yeah. Where to start on changing your life? I think the best thing is a morning routine. I think that's like <laughs> stop talking. I think a morning routine is definitely the best thing you can do for yourself. Like the number one thing you should just be doing right now is a morning routine. That's the first way in order to change how you're feeling. Um, because I feel, you know, your morning set your day up like how the rest, they set the tone of your day. So how you set the tone of your day is how you act in your day. Your days make up your weeks, your weeks make up your months, your months make up your years. And that's technically your life. So... Uh, yeah, morning routine, 100%. I think that is the first thing you should be doing. So I have a course coming out. I've been building a course for the past month. It's called the Goal Getter Mindset Course. Um, it's five modules and it's all on, you know, paradigms, self-image, how you view yourself, your beliefs and how you're going to be able to, and how you're going to be able to um, succeed with your goals. Because a lot of us, you know, set intentions and then, just fall off and do absolutely awful like and then we go back up get a motivation and it's like this vicious like wave or like a cycle you know where we get motivated we fall out and then go back down so it's of course kind of all on that morning routines everything like that but in an I deep dive into morning routine but I've broken it down into five things I don't check my phone imagine living in Canada yeah I really want to move to Los Angeles really badly but anyway it's starting off with journaling I have a journal here I literally go through these I write like six pages a day minimum every day I'm such a journaler but writing out your gratitude so grounding yourself things you're grateful for you should really answer the viewers questions I think there's really you no know, I've answered all of them so far Yeah, so gratitude, grounding yourself, actually being grateful for certain things. I think we take so much stuff for granted. <laughs> yeah, this is weird. Um, we take so much stuff for granted, literally as simple as like being able to see, be, being able to hear, like being able to walk. As a child, I was in a wheelchair and that is something I will never take for granted. Like when I was born, I couldn't walk. Um, I had a really bad hip condition. And so for me, it's just, you know, being grateful for things you actually have. Cause like there's people out here who can't walk or who can't hear, um, like who can't taste. Like my mom's lost her taste. So just writing that down, um, first thing, finding yourself, grounding yourself and you just find more reasons throughout the day of to things to be thankful for especially because you're in quarantine you're going to be in your head you're going to probably think you know so much people are complaining right now they're like oh my god this is awful like I hate quarantine we're in such a horrible time and I'm like okay we're we're we have so much luxuries right now the fact that we have Netflix you know food you know things like this like we didn't have all this like 100 years ago like people going out to the war and that's something that you'd be worried about and stressed about but right now all we have is to stay inside. Like you have all the resources, you have the internet, like just finding things to be grateful for. And then your goals, writing them, them down in the present tense. Um, so saying, I'm so happy now that I am la di da di da, or I'm so happy now that whatever the like it is, um, and embodying that feeling. And then journaling, just writing out your thoughts, anything like that. And then doing meditation or breath work if you want. But the journaling, I think is, for me, it's actually more important than meditation. Um, that's what I do first thing in the morning. And then I check my phone and it just sets your day out for the right tone. Um, how can I take guided meditations here so you want to can't visualize? I think I think you should separate meditation and visualization and just practice each of them and then you can loop them together. Cause that is quite hard. Um meditating and visualizing without thoughts coming in so what I would do is practice visualization listen to good music literally classic by MKTO best song pop that on and then visualize shut your eyes imagine things I mean you can definitely just picture any scenario anything simple as like you going to get coffee like just 
build momentum of things that have happened and then start to visualize things that haven't happened. And then, and then try meditation. Meditation is such a practice. You're not going to get it for ages. Like I've struggled with it for such a long time. Like I still find it hard. I've done Wim Hof's breath work, which I also really like, but yeah, just build up momentum, start practicing, um, put, but separate the two and then start to bring them together it'll be much easier um so that's what i would do but yeah again going back to it if you want any change just start with the morning routine that would be literally the one thing i would start doing you will notice a big difference because when you want to change it's hard to like see a ton of things and be like what should i do like picking tons of things just pick one thing morning routine get it done but yeah i discussed that more in the course um i break it down okay let me find some i've got a few but i want to find like good ones this is so weird i've never done a live stream before oh yeah okay so i made an instagram called the goal getter mindset i literally made it like a year ago for my podcast and i started to change it but that's the name of my course the goal getter mindset so i wanted to like link the two but it's just a quotes page like if you want to like I love following like boss babe. I love following women CEO mindset, impact of women, female hustlers. I just think there's there's so much like male like success pages and there's so many male YouTubers who are like, you know, teaching mindset and teaching business and success. But I feel like there's literally no female YouTubers who do this. Like, I really don't. So I wanted to make an Instagram platform just to, you know, create one of them so that I can link to my channel but also my course that's the name of my course but also I just want to like create a community on Instagram that is for women so that's why I made it because I don't use my personal Instagram a lot like I don't haven't had the app on my phone for around two to three maybe even four months I just logged on to it in Safari all the time but I do like doing an Instagram that isn't like personally mine I just like sticking with YouTube but um there is so many male YouTubers I found it so hard to find like female youtubers who talk about mindset i don't know like i literally can't find any if you have any of your favorite like female youtubers please let me know because i would love to find them out because i literally have found i know oh my annie i love her i love school of affluence even though it's i just like her videos kind of like on law of attraction um gabrielle bernstein i love her uh, who else Catherine zenkina the manifestation babe she's my favorite podcast for sure love her um I've been trying to find a lot of more female role models to look up to because for ages I've been always looking up to males like Grant Cardone Ty Lopez Gary V like so many males and I never could relate to them and I didn't find like what I was doing as motivating because I was watching men all the time so I've been like making a conscious effort to start like watching um females but I most of the books I read are males to be honest um how do you stay in alignment? I feel like it's hard for me to manifest even the little things. Um, how to stay in alignment? So again, it is something that you're going to catch yourself falling out. Oh, Marie Forleo. I love her. Sorry. Had to say that. Um, yeah, you're going to be constantly going in and out of alignment. Like it's over time, you, again, you will build momentum and it will be easy and you will stick with it. But at the start, like just telling yourself like, any time you notice yourself falling out, just try and change your state in that moment. All you, all you can do is change your state. You can't, you know, plan for the next year for you to be in alignment. Like just plan for right now to be in alignment. And over time, you'll start to build the habit of tapping back into alignment or tapping back into the feeling, um, you know, reminding yourself, okay, time to get back into this emotional state. And over time, you'll build the habit and it'll, you'll just keep bouncing back so much quicker, if that makes sense. Um so again, Gabby Bernstein, in her book, actually, she has a thing called the choose again method. I'll read it out here. Let me find it. This is like probably the best way you can change your state. Um, so the step one is to notice the thoughts. So how you can notice your thoughts is it's hard to monitor all your thoughts. You have like 65,000 thoughts a day. 90% 90 of them were from the ones from the day before. Um, so step one is noticing the thought. Um, so how you notice your thought is by checking in on your emotion. How are you feeling? If you're feeling sad, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling whatever, it's usually because you're having negative thoughts. So first check out your emotion. What are you feeling? 
then you'll be able to listen to the thoughts because you're aware. Um, so notice the thought. And then the second one is to forgive the thought. So just thank you for, re it says, thank you for revealing to me what I don't want so that I can clarify what I do want. So I'll repeat that. It says, thank you for revealing to me what I don't want so that I can clarify what I do want. So just noticing the thought, forgiving it and saying, thank you for telling myself this, but this isn't what I want. So choosing that. And then the third step is to choose again. So how can I change this thought into something positive? So let's say you're having a thought like, oh my gosh, um, just going back to the weight one, like, oh, I'm so unhappy with the way I look. Like, I want to lose weight. Like, I want to lose weight so bad, but I look so bad. Like, you might look in the mirror and just say, I look fat. I look out of shape. And you basically catch that thought. You go, thank you for clarifying what I don't want and choose the next one, which is I'm on a journey to getting the dream body that I want. That is something I used to do for ages. I mean, before quarantine, I was literally working out like six days a week for hours. Like, I remember I'd go to the gym, I'd start working out at one and then I'd leave at five. And I was obsessed. I felt incredible. I missed the gym so much. But um, how I did that was purely by instead of looking at my body and like disgust that it wasn't where I wanted it to be. I came from a place of love of like, OK, I don't have the body I want, but who is the person that would how would the person act of the person's body? Wait, no, let me say this again. How would I act if I had the body that I wanted and I would step into that character and then my body started to change like dramatically how can I practice self-love again morning routine I think like self-care I, I think a lot of people can represent self-love as like doing a face mask and a bubble bath like yes you can self-care but a lot of people then in like their self-care tips you know they're eating junk food or they're like watching Netflix and eating a pizza and they're like self-love time and I'm like yes like we've been there I've done that a million and one times and like it, you know like I'm not a saint here but it's the way to practice self-love is to have actual like mental health care so a morning routine best way to start I literally it, even like breaking it down into smaller like if you don't want to do a morning routine just journaling like journaling has changed my life I used to be an anxious person I was depressed like I'd always be going to therapy and like nothing was changing in my life um I dropped out of school because I was so unhappy um you know, like so many things. And then I started journaling and it completely transformed my life. Like literally just writing out your thoughts. It's like therapy, you know, like I literally cannot describe how much it changed me, but morning routines for sure. Now is the perfect time to start doing it as well. You know, start like if you don't, if you don't have anything else to do for the rest of the day, like let's say you don't want to build a business. Like you're just someone who has your nine to five job and right now you're not able to work it just involve your whole day around do, building a morning routine and building that momentum. And then when you do go back to work, wake up an hour earlier and do it or wake up half an hour early and do it. Um, the Morning Miracle by Hal Elrod is a great book as well if you want to learn more about the morning routine. And this is on my Kindle. Where is it? Can you see? That book right there. The Miracle Morning. It's the six habits that will transform your life before 8 a.m. But um, morning routines, I can't stress them enough. Um, but if you don't want to do morning routines right now, I mean, why not? But if you do, journaling, just get a journal. And a lot of people actually ask me how to journal. Literally, I just write out thoughts, any like epiphanies I've had, any like negative things. I just get it all out into piece of paper. If I'm sad, I write it out. If I'm happy, I write it out. Like yesterday, I wrote literally like 10 pages and it just clears my head and then my actions are so much easier thank you so much funny you use weight loss as an example that's what I've been trying to manifest recently yeah so if you're still watch watching Ashley um like who is the person you want to be because like for me being a high value woman that's like how I am able to kind of like step into a person who looks after herself because like when I think of like a high value like feminine woman I'm like okay that wo a woman like that looks after herself you know she treats her body with love and care and only feeds herself with the best food a high value woman isn't gonna lie around and eat tons of food that isn't good for their body like a slob like I try and think of it as like classy and I like just picture that and therefore losing weight has been effortless because I've stepped into that person whereas before I could have been like oh my God, I need to lose weight so bad. Like I hate my body and then it would just make me want to eat more. So it's just thinking of the person you want to be. Like if you want to be a confident, like just trying to think of like a specific person and then 
almost acting like acting as if like just have fun with it and try and pretend you are this person and then any moment you catch yourself trying to fall out of that character just step back in um a great i know joe dispenza he has a meditation online i'm gonna buy it soon but uh it's a meditation or there's tons on youtube but a meditation basically on how to meditate into the person you want to become so every morning meditating that you're already becoming this person and then once the meditation is over it's like uh, a, a switch in your brain has flicked and you are now this person it's like the it's like uh, magic you know you're visualizing um and meditating for like 10 minutes a day on the person you want to become when you open your eyes he, it, the way it works is like you look around and you think you are that person and then you act your day that way um but it's a meditation so it basically he says okay i want you to picture the perfect day of how you would like your day to pan out if you were this dream person and then you meditate on the how your day would act if you weren't this person if, if you were you know someone who had bad habits and you visualize the two in your meditation and i promise you 10 times out of 10 if you do this your whole day will pan out the right way because once you visualize the stuff that you don't want in this meditation and then straight after, you're not going to go and do that because you're like, I don't want to be this person. I want to be this person, you know? Yes, I never focused on what I ate. No, but now I track it to know what I'm putting into my body. Yeah, I mean, I used to count macros. And for me, it became kind of not an addictive thing, but more just like, um, my brother keeps mastering me. Um, if, if, for me, it just didn't work. I have started to practice intuitive eating. So when I'm hungry, I eat. When I'm not hungry, I don't eat because there was some days where like I would finish my fitness pal for the day, like my macros would be in and then I would still be starving. Like my stomach, I'd be hungry. So I think just following intuitive eating is great for me. Also, if you haven't tried intermittent fasting, um, intermittent fasting, my favorite thing. So I wake up in the morning, I have a, yeah, keto is too restrictive for me. I find like for me personally, I just didn't think keto was healthy, like having bacon and avocado for breakfast. Like, no, like <laughs> I am, I eat more in abundance, but I eat a lot of fish, um, like salmon, a lot of vegetables, um, fruit, a lot of greens. Like I always have like green smoothies, but intermittent fasting is amazing. I wake up in the morning and I have a bulletproof coffee. I have a, what I actually, I have a video. Oh my gosh. It's probably like half a year old now. Um, when I lived back in Ireland, but it's a, how I make my bulletproof coffee for intermittent fasting. Um, but now I just put a teaspoon of coconut oil in. I blend it. It's so fun. It's like part of my ritual. It gets me up in the morning out of bed. The one thing I don't think I'll ever quit is coffee because it just gets me up in the morning. It's part of my morning routine. It's fun. I just love it. So I blend that up and then it fills me up. The fat from the coconut oil makes me feel amazing. And then I eat around one o'clock. Depends how late I ate. The night before but I do 16 8 um I know I've know some people who do the one meal a day fast but for me that just doesn't work um yeah I've been drinking more coffee stops me from overeating yeah don't yeah I would say like for me one one to two cups like today I've had two um but you know one to two is perfect just as long as you're drinking a lot of water because it can be quite dehydrating um but then again also i found the days i don't work or the days i'm not doing stuff on my laptop i'm just thinking about the next meal to make and it's purely out of boredom so keeping yourself busy you know if you you know can't work from home right now start a blog or like start something just to keep yourself busy from constantly thinking about food because you're just eating out of pure boredom and like that's not good and it's you know you're not gonna feel good you're gonna go to quarantine like not looking good and I I did this like literally the past two weeks I've gone in and out of this like I'm not saying I'm this perfect saint like I went through the same stuff I was you know waking up and intermittent fasting and then the minute my breakfast was done I was like okay what will I have for lunch because I wasn't doing anything I was just watching Netflix um but what I've started doing now is picking a series that I really like and only allowing myself to watch one episode at the end of the day if I've completed my work. An incredible, incredible series on Netflix if you haven't seen it. I wish I could erase watching it and go watch it again because I loved it so much. It's called Imposters. Um, probably the best series I've ever watched in my entire life. Um, it's like, oh, you have to watch it if you haven't. It's called Imposters. But yeah, I think I'm going to end this live q a i just want watching the live wait i'm confused my brother my brother stopped texting <laughs> he said he's watching it um yeah i know this was a bit all over the place it was my first one it's a bit like 
yeah it's a bit strange. I've never done this before. But um, if you are looking for another new books as well, I'm also reading The Warrior Goddess. Let me find it. Warrior Goddess Training by Hatharash. Or, oh, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Look it up on Amazon. It's all about feminine energy and how to be like a divine woman. Really interesting. I've also been reading Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein. Um, I finished this again, Psycho Cybernetics. This is an awesome book awesome 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 book for for like your self-image and visualizing um i honestly think this is like a like this is a really powerful book like if you read this like you will change like if you want to start earning more money or if you want to build a business like it all stems from like how you view yourself because let's say you go in the intention of wanting to start an online business but you view yourself as a failure or you view yourself as someone who just couldn't succeed in that field um it's all about changing your self-image because that's how you act at the end of the day um, but there was an incredible quote. I actually, let me find it. So this is like, I actually have to read this out because it's incredible. It says, don't begin by trying to force yourself to have absolute faith in the desired success. This is too big a bite for you to mentally digest at first. Use gradualness. So begin to think about the desired end result as you do when you worry about the future. Um, when you worry, you do not attempt to convince yourself that the outcome will be undesirable. Instead, you begin, you begin gradually. You usually begin with the suppose, just suppose such and such a thing happens. You mentally say to yourself, so like visualizing, like what if this were to happen? You repeat this idea over and over to yourself. You play with it. Next comes the idea of possibility. Well, after all, you say such a thing is possible. It could happen. So you're kind of building momentum like, oh, okay, this could happen. Uh, and then comes mental imagery. You begin to picture yourself all the various negative possibilities. You play these imaginative uh, pictures over and over to yourself, adding small details and refinements. As the, as the picture becomes more and more real to you, appropriate feelings begin to manifest themselves, just as, the, just as if the imagined outcome has already happened, because your body literally can't tell the difference between what's real, what's not. Um, and this is the way that fear and anxiety develop. So you can use this in a positive way or a negative way. But yeah, the, if you're looking for like, like if you really want to change your life, like I, I really think this is the big book, but it's very like it's it's you have to be present when reading this because it's not like a a book that is um an easy, fun read, like something like Jen Sincero's books, like, you know, Jen Sincero, um, she her books are funny like you're a badass life you're a badass at making money all of hers are like fun books that you can read and they're like feel good but this is quite like more scientific like you need to be present when reading it like the amount of times when I'd be reading this on the subway or just walking or just in bed or whatever I would have to read the same page over like three times because I was like whoa like I wasn't present for that at all so I don't understand it it's definitely a bit more scientific but it's it's an awesome book it's all written by a plastic surgeon and it's how he found it so interesting how, you know, people get plastic surgery and like, let's say a girl would get a nose job. He would give a nose job to two people and they both looked completely different after their nose jobs, but one still felt the way she did before. And then the other girl felt super confident after her nose job. And that's when he was starting to realize like, wow, like this is really a mental thing. This isn't this isn't necessarily your outward appearance because the girl had her whole face changed in the nose job, yet she still felt just as insecure. So he started to learn about like the subconscious mind, the self-image and yeah, it's incredible. So those would be it. Um, I have all my books here. I've been reading so much during quarantine. Like, ugh, I don't know. I'm such a book junkie, but yeah, I'm going to finish the live stream here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this was so fun. And then it's just up on YouTube forever. You don't have to worry about editing. This is great. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a good quarantine. If you have any questions, you can message me on Instagram at goalgettermindset or at Ella Ringrose. Um, and if you have any questions, yeah, just pop them, pop them there or in the comments. If I don't know if you can comment on this. I don't know. I've never done one of these. But yeah, have a great day.